Have you found your book being pirated somewhere? Did you find some website that you're kind of saying, oh man, what the heck do I need to do to stop all this madness? Well, you're in luck because today I brought in from the digitalreader.com none other than Nate Hoffelder. So you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned to today's video. Hey, I'm Dale L. Roberts, best-selling author as well as self-publishing advocate who wants to show you how to publish books to sell. And if you want that too, of course, subscribe to this channel. And of course, visit me also over on twitch.tv slash self-publish where you're going to you're gonna get more information about writing books that sell. You can subscribe for free with your Amazon Prime. Hey, I am super pumped up for today's guest. So without any further ado, there's going to be some technical things that we're going to have to iron out as we're going along. But that's A-OK. -okay. So I'm going to bring him on over here to the show, welcoming Nate Hoffelder. How you feeling, buddy? I I'm fantastic. So I want to warn you as well as everybody else, they're testing out smoke alarms here on this side of things. So if Nate ends up taking the reins at some point or other, my apologies, folks. It was not something I was anticipating. So I want to say to the live viewers, uh, hang in there. We're going to have a live question and answer right after I get a few questions out the way. But I want, of course, let's first of all address the elephant in the room, okay? It's ebook piracy. Can we be able to prevent pirating ebooks. Can we mitigate this? Well, I brought somebody on here who's going to be talking about it. His name is Nate Hoffelder. And Nate actually has been building and running WordPress sites since 2010. He blogs about indie publishing and helps authors connect with readers by customizing websites to suit each author's voice. You may have heard of his site, The Digital Reader, mentioned on news sites such as TechCrunch, Engadget, Gizmodo, and The New York Times. And oddly enough, I've actually cited him as a source in a few instances. So I am really beyond pumped to have you here, Nate. Let's just jump right into things. Ebook piracy, man, it runs rampant. It is something a lot of people are always concerned about. How can an author prevent ebook piracy? Light, and you can keep it down to a dull roar and you can keep it to a nuisance but you can actually stop it from ever happening because mm. every time you use, um, stop one part another one will pop, pop up and take its place so the best you can do is you know can, and make it the best you can do really is to add it as a maintenance task and once a month check and see if your work is being pirated and then you'll get them taken down mm, okay so what about I mean, something that we were kind of discussing prior to this in our communication on email, how, what are the best steps that we can mitigate ebook piracy at least? Well, one service that I used to recommend was Blasty because what they would do is uh, they would, you know, constantly run searches on, on the web to mm -hmm. see if your book is being pirated on, you know, pirate sites or in uh, retailers and so on, but they went out of business. So mm -hmm. now I guess the best tool would be to um, ask your virtual assistant to run these kind of searches if you have one, or just set up a Google alert. So um, for your name and for your book titles. So yeah. um, if it, if someone, if you're mentioned on a site, you'll know to look at go look at the site, see if it's maybe it's just a review or if it's a pirate site. It's so funny that you mention an assistant that would do it because my assistant, uh, right before you and I got connected, um, she had discovered quite a few of my titles, uh, not only my children's books but also my fitness books that were being pirated on those sites. So it was just rather. A, a nice coincidence that you got a hold of me. So how does someone set up Google Alerts? Because I know for me, she told me like, hey, you got to do X, Y, and Z. How simple is that for someone to do? Um, well, actually, it's funny you should mention your assistant because um, my, I found my book had been pirated from an assistant, um, from a publishing assistant. I forget her name, but I guess we'll, we'll add her name in the comments. It's, okay. it's mentioned in my blog post. But to set up a Google Alert, what you need, what you do, or what I do is, I just type Google Alert and then into a search engine. I press Enter, and that usually take me to the site for for Google to set up its own alerts. And yeah. I don't remember the domain, that's why I have to type it in every time. Yeah. And you know, for typing in one alert, you just basically just um, type in the terms you want and select okay. how often you want to be notified about it, and then um, just click Go, and Google will handle it from there. Gotcha. So it's, it's pretty simple and automatic. 
Yeah, and I know that I have mine set up for like a weekly type thing. Uh, can you change it like a, to like a daily, monthly, weekly, beyond that? Mm -hmm. I used to have, um, I used to use Google Alerts a lot back when, you know, I had to cover ebook news all the time, mm -hmm. and there was breaking news, so I had it set for uh, sending me mentions as soon as they happen. But now I have it set, set to just send me mentions once a week or just once a day, and I've changed it. One of the other options is that you can have it set for uh, only send you the best ones, or have you send you, or you can have it send you everything. Hmm. But there's a whole lot of noise if you have it send you everything. So I don't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah, it can, it can be some somewhat noisy for sure. Uh, so what are the different types of ebook pirating sites? Because I know they come in all forms. Well, they're. I would say more classifications or categories. Like, yeah. there's the sites that don't actually have any books, and they're just trying to run a credit card scam of some kind, and they're pretending to have your book. Uh, there's the um, pirate site that wants to um, actually share your book with everyone. There's others that want to sell your book, which that's where I found mine actually, and a whole lot of other, other authors. There was a site selling all our all our ebooks. And then sometimes you even see uh, pirated ebooks show up in the major retailers, which is a surprise, but it happens. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, I ran into this quite a bit in my early portion of uh, doing publishing was in 2014. I was stumbling over some of these sites, but then I was finding that there really was no content whatsoever. So they were essentially just put on Great to sites. Yeah. So they're catfishing essentially. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what is my first course of action. What do I need to do to put a stop to a site when I see this happening? Well, the first thing to do is figure out what type of site it is. Um, okay. Because if it's a catfisher or if it's a personal pirate site, you don't bother to, you shouldn't send a, well, technically the, the main tool is that you send people a DMCA notice. Okay, great. And which is a particular type of legal notice for in the US, but now almost everyone who has a site, now almost every hosting company in the world now responds to DMC notices, which is pretty great because it makes my job easier. It makes your job easier. Yeah. And so if it's a fake pirate site or if um, what you should do is send a DMCA notice to Google to get that fake listing um, taken out of their Google search results. Mm. Uh, if it's a real pirate site, you should send a notice to the hosting company that's hosting the site. And if it's say, and if you find the pirated the pirated ebook in a retail on a retail site, you send the notice to the retailer so they can take it down. What does a what does a DMCA notice look like, and where can I get it filled out? Well, it's, it's DMCA stands for Digital Millennium Copyright um, mm -hmm. Act, and generally, where you what I generally do is I just do type in DMCA and then the, either the hosting company or the retailer's name, and then I press enter and let Google help me find the right page. Because you know each retailer, each hosting company has their own uh, DMCA policy page, and they generally, they most will have a form for you to fill out. Others will want to ask you to send them an email. So, but, so the first step for this is Google. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. So uh, now that we kind of understand where to, to do the DMCA and some of those steps that involved, what are some tools and services you would recommend for fighting piracy altogether? Um, well, there are a few um, piracy services like Digimark Guardian, but they're rather pricey. So mm. this is that's why I recommend either um, asking the, your PA to take care of it or uh, setting up a Google alert. Okay. What uh, and as far as the premium, uh, do you remember off the top of your head how much that would run for those premium services and tools? No, but s s several of the ones I saw were aimed at you know corporate clients, so there I expect them to be fairly expensive. Ooh, you know, okay. Stuff I, there's ones I can't afford really. Yeah, something that's like thousands of dollars per month, I imagine. Then, mm -hmm. gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm sure they're good. It's just they're a little expensive. Yes. What are some common? Questions and concerns that you get when it comes to ebook piracy. Common um, questions. Um, yeah, mainly it's just how to deal with it. Um, it's. I think the common con concerns everyone just. It's one thing you. It, 
well, I've, I have mostly gotten over it as of in the past 10 years because I've been pirated so often. You, um, I wouldn't say I'm immune so much as calloused to the act. So it no yeah. longer upsets me like it used to. But one of one concern I see is that a lot of authors get emotionally upset over it when they should just be dealing it with it um, you know, as, as a business matter and just taking care of it and done and move on. Although I yeah. just was... Mm. Gotcha. All right. Well, Ben, we've really burned through all the questions really, really fast. Um, and we're going to go over to a live question and answer here in just a moment. So how can viewers get a hold of you? Well, you can find me on Twitter and you can find awesome. me through my website, uh, The Digital Reader. I also hang out in a Facebook group called The Help Desk, where I offer um, tech support. I answer tech questions. Oh, um, nice. Nice. With the WordPress background and such like that then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic. And of course, you can actually just point down because you have your website just below your face right now. So oh, okay. uh, right below Nate's face right now is the link to his website. So now we're going to go over into the live question and answer. Um, thankfully, knock on wood, the fire alarm hasn't gone off, Nate. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to scroll through the comments. So if it's getting pirated, then why get a copyright, Ben Bills asks. Well, I if it's being pirated, there's no real reason to have a cop file copyright get notice. Although, um, you can get the thing is most hosting companies will respond to a DMCA notice whether or not you filed a copyright. The mm -hmm. reason you want to f file a copyright is in case you want to license it to a publisher or to uh, some uh, some mm. media production company. And it's better to file the copyright yourself because if you're not careful or if you happen to have met an unscrupulous company, they might try to file it and put themselves down as the owner, in which case it's, you're going to have a heck of a fight getting it back. Ooh, so good point. Always be sure to file it yourself. Excellent. Is that something you do for your books? No, I haven't bothered yet. I, well, all my books are just things I give away. So mm -hmm. if someone, if someone you know, filed a copyright on them, I just write a blog post and you know, make fun of them. <laughs> <laughs> Publicly shame them then. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. You know, um, so as the uh, audience is here and such like that, and I'm waiting on any kind of questions that they might have here for you, I'm just going to go ahead and keep on picking your brain. You've actually had the digital reader up for quite a few years now because I know I've run into your source. Whatever got you into the business? Well, back when, back in early 2007, when everyone was rumors, rumors were circling about the Kindle, yeah. uh, no one was really writing about the ebook e and the Kindle stories I wanted. So I started looking into this myself uh -huh. and I started writing, um, doing, well, basically the, being the news editor for a mobile read forums, an ebook community. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing things like finding the trademark information and, you know, finding references to the Kindle on Amazon's UK and Europe sites, European sites. Yeah. And then I, you know, bought a kit. I bought a Kindle the very first Monday when they announced it. You know, about six in the morning before they even announced it, the website was live. So I bought one. Wow! Wow! So you were you yeah. were an early adopter then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, and question then, for you: Did you publish? When did you switch over to that? Um, switched over to the, the digital reader. That was in two thousand January two thousand ten. Gotcha. I wanted to have more, you know, control over what I was saying. I wanted to have you know, wanted to create my own identity as a blogger. So, mm, okay. And um, let me think here. So, what are some of the things I know with you being a pro when it comes to doing WordPress? What are some of the issues that you commonly see authors making as far as mistakes goes with their websites? Well, it's things like using backgrounds that are just um, make it hard to read the text or yeah. say white text on a gray background or a very busy background, which tends to make um, drown out the text. But, and then there's also issues like um, um, using images which don't quite fit the space. So they're cropped funny or they're take up or they're so big that they make the page load slowly. Ooh, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's brutal. People are going to bounce after a while. Okay, so John Wasser just asked a great question. He said, I found most of the pirates were located in countries that do not recognize our copyright laws. What can I do in those cases? This is why I like to only deal with the hosting companies, because the hosting companies will resp usually respond. Um, this, is, this is why I don't talk to pirates 
Um, those companies will answer a DMCA notice and they'll take the site down or they'll make the pirate take the ebook down. So hmm. you know, that, that's not really an issue. Katrina, the lady writes, asks, what drew you to piracy concerns and how to resolve them? What drew me to... Mm. Well, I got, I got into having to deal with piracy because I was my blog posts are being pirated um, all the time, and you know it got so frustrating that I you know developed processes processes just to deal with it right away, real quick, and then move on. And um, once I had that down pat, I started sharing my information so other people could you know deal with, could you know, take care of it just as quickly. Okay. Okay, so it came uh, like self necessity at first, and now mm -hmm. you're able to pass that information on to everybody else. Yes. Very good. And of course, you've already kind of just, she already, uh, maybe uh, Katrina's a little bit late, but he already did kind of cover how to resolve them earlier inside the broadcast. So please, if you happen to miss it, folks, we burned through it really fast. It was very simple information and such. Um, so uh, what, are, what are some other things that you would like to share while you're here uh, live in the audience and such? Um. Oh, I don't know. I'm kind of drawing a blank now. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's a okay. We went through those questions so fast. Uh, but uh, if there's any other questions, folks, uh, please drop them inside the uh, chat here. Definitely would love to hear from you. Um, so questions for you beyond your blog. Do you ever publish books yourself or are you just a like you like to consume the content? Well, I make my own uh, graphics. I make my own little um, handouts and workbooks, but I don't have any. I haven't published any books. I've got an unpublished manuscript on uh, the business of publishing, but I've never actually um, published it. I've only let a few people see it. So, man, well, he says I'll finish it. Let's let's pull the trigger today. We got it. We got to get you going. <laughs> it needs to. I need to add like four or five more sections. But ah. It's, yeah, it's, it's only like 3,000 words, but I've shown it to a couple of people and they said I should take each of the four sections and turn them into like 5,000 word um, sections themselves and then publish that. So, oh, like separately or thinking like short reads and then like an entire collection or 5,000 per each section? 5,000 per each section, yeah. Gotcha. It seems like a random number, but uh, hey, either way, as long as you get the job done, a uh, question for you, are you sheltered in right now wherever you're living? Well, I work from home anyway, so sheltered in is just... You know, You're like, do what I need to do what I normally do. <laughs> well, it's canceled all the, you know, all the public events have been canceled, and that's where I was meeting all my clients, so it's a bit of a nuisance, yes. Because I was planning to go to a lot of conferences and SF cons this year, and they've all been canceled, so... Yeah, yeah uh, I, I I feel you on that. All right, uh, Katrina just asked another good one. She said, do you have a book discussing piracy that people can download? Well, he kind of said right now he hasn't quite published one. Good news is, folks, is actually he has an entire article, very much well worth the read. Uh, it's The link is inside the description down below. Click it, go visit his site for sure. And his site's right below his face right there, thedigitalreader.com. It is hyphenated in between each one of those. Uh, Bonnie Phillips asks, how long did it take to get over it the first time you saw your work pirated? Oh, years, really? Yeah. Yeah, so it's not... Mm, so I, I probably started getting used to it in about two, three years of seeing it happen. And now it's just, oh, it happened again. Although when my my, my ebook was pirated, I was just thrilled because I took it as a validation that I was now a real author because I've been pirated. <laughs> Nice, you've made it when yeah. you've been pirated. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's good that's, stuff. That's because I've been dealing with this for 10 years now, so now I can make jokes about it. But yeah. It, it takes a while. Let's mm -hmm. see here. Uh, we've got a few other people. How can we prevent piracy beforehand? I don't know of a way. Um, my ebooks were only limited, sold in the Kindle store. Okay. And I, they're in... in they're in Amazon's print replica format, which is basically their PDF formats. And it's really hard to get the ebook out of that. And yet someone still had bothered. So, yeah, I don't. Well, the thing about the thing about pirates is that they're more tech, technically capable than you or I. And mm -hmm. so everything you could do to stop them, they can they can outthink it. They're, they'll um, out, they'll bypass any type of security you apply. 
So what are your thoughts on? Stop it. Hmm? What's your thoughts on digital rights management uh, (DRM)? Do you do you suggest people enable that on their eBooks or not enable it? Uh, it won't make a difference on piracy, and okay. I, for one, always take it off the eBooks I buy. So. Um, it's it's really not easy. It's really easy to take it off. Is what I mean to say. Yeah, yeah. So it, it for a pirate, it's probably like another day, and you know, a, a, like a walk in the park for them. They're like, oh, digital rights management. I've got this one. Well, it's probably as simple as just download. They download the ebook, and then their system automatically finds the ebook, takes the DRM off, and they're done. It's probably about that simple. Yes. Excellent. Um, all right. Well, cool. Uh, as we start to kind of, you know. Uh, We've burned through every question and such like that. We've have a few more people that are hanging out here. I appreciate everybody tuning in live. Um, any last minute things that you would like to share with the audience? No, thanks. Uh, okay. You're an easy guest, man. You're an easy guest. I definitely appreciate it. Well, hey, folks, um, I, we are going to start to wrap things up. Of course, again, uh, you want to check out Nate's full article to click inside the link inside the description down below and go visit that site. Uh, I've got a question here. Looks, this is perfect. We got to keep these questions going here, folks, if you want to stay on. Uh, certain services let you embed the user's information into the file when they purchase, acquire it through their system. The purpose being any leaks will be discovered and they share it if they will be sharing their own user info. The question, have you either of you had any experience with this? And if so, can you talk about its effectiveness in curbing piracy? I'm not familiar with that at all. Nate? It, well, I know a company that does this. It's called Bookstream, and what they are essentially doing in, in embedding a user info is adding digital watermarks. And mm. I can't really say it's an effective way to uh, limit piracy, but one way you could use it is to um, embed the user info in an ebook um, before you lend it to a beta reader or a reviewer. Okay. And if you find that ebook later pirated, then you know this one reviewer or this one beta reader had done it, and so you know not to deal with them again. Oh, well said, well said. Yeah. Now that it makes sense to me. At first, I was reading it; it wasn't making, it wasn't clicking for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as a, it's not really an effective tool for identifying who you can sue because most likely. Um, the person sh who shared it is going to be somewhere you can't sue them or they'll be out of state or they'll be out of country. And even if you could sue them, it's pro probably costs too much to sue them to, for it to be worth your time. So really the best you could use them for is to figure out who to avoid doing business with. Yeah, yeah. and as, as you're probably very aware, indie authors aren't the most um, mm -hmm. uh, wealthy people on, on the, the face of the planet. So going and getting litigation sometimes is going to be very, very costly. Mm -hmm. All righty. Okay, folks. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start to wrap things up again. Date, Nate, thank you very much. How can people find you again? Well, they can find me on Twitter and they can find me through my site, which you say is below my name. Excellent. So. Very good, Nate. Hey, thanks very much. Stick around for just a minute longer. And folks, I'm going to go ahead and send you over into this very next video where we're going to be talking about some of the common self-publishing mistakes that you could definitely avoid quite a few of them I made myself and I want to make sure that you don't make them. So in the meantime, hey, uh, give Nate some love. Make sure you visit him over on Twitter and go check out his article. In the meantime, between times, it's been self-publishing with Dale and I will talk to you later.